All right, so let's get this started. My name is Anthony DeSimone, and the area I looked at was the Cod Corporation's vehicle airbag crisis. So a little bit of what topics are going to be overviewed here. We're going to look at some research on Coombs on how to handle crises and how to handle uh, the types of crises that are out there, response strategies that are there. We're going to overview the crisis a little bit, give you guys a little taste of what's actually going on with this airbag crisis, because it's a mess. Um, the organizational responses from BMW, Grand Motor Works, Takata Corporation, and NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Then we're going to break down, discuss their tactics and what they did, draw some conclusions, and then wrap everything up. So first, Coombs type of crises. They're victim ones where there's minimal crises, such as natural disasters, rumors, workplace incidents, uh, malevolence, things of that nature. The other thing to look at is you go to a low crisis responsibility with challenges or accusations where an outside party challenges something that an organization is working on. So looking at something that could have went wrong inside that they're trying to bring to light. Next one down, technical error accidents. That's an industrial incident. Something goes wrong at the plant. Technical error product harm. We'll see that in this case where we look at how the airbag had failed. Preventable ones. These are strong crisis responsibility. This is human error accidents. This is human error with product harm, and this is on, uh, also organizational misdeeds. Response strategies. We'll go through these real quick. There are a couple that are used here that I'll highlight. There is scapegoating that you'll see in this presentation about how they push the blame on somebody else. There is excusing and justification. Those are diminishing uh, postures where they try to don't, uh, tone down the severity of the crisis. There's rebuilding, which is compensation and apology. That's the way of the organization trying to rebuild their brand after it's been damaged. And lastly, bolstering posture, which is reminding them about all the great things that the organization has done, doing ingratiation, which is saying, hey, our stakeholders are doing a wonderful job of supporting us and helping us get through the crisis, and then victim it, saying, hey, we were victim of an unforeseen circumstance. So, overview of the crisis. Technically, this crisis started in 2001. There was a Honda Civic that air, that's airbag ruptured. Short of the long of it was high absolute humidity causes these airbags to fail, and they send metal shrapnel into the cabin of the vehicle, which is hurting and killed a few individuals over the last decade or so. Since then, years have passed, 03, 04, 07, and 08, there have been other incidences. Finally, in 2013 and early 2014, NHTSA stepped in as government intervention to begin looking at this, and that's technically where the crisis starts. Started with 7 million recalls from a handful of manufacturers. Didn't seem like that big of a deal. We fast forward to 2016, we're now up to 34 million vehicles recalled. There's 22 vehicle manufacturers. This has become a mess, in all honesty. To date, just under 8 million have been repaired. So it's a slow and painstaking process, but they are making progress on it. And currently there have been reported of seven deaths and over 100 injuries as a result of this crisis with the airbag failure. So, the organizational responses. I said I picked three different organizations due to where they stand on this crisis. First and foremost is BMW. One press release back in 2013, they called it a precautionary recall of 1.6 million of their vehicles. They said they would compensate for the repair costs and they were going to get in contact via letter with specific owners. Other than that, BMW has done nothing. They have no other press releases, no social media acknowledgement. It's almost as business as usual. They want to basically, and we'll talk about this in the discussion section, they're kind of just trying to breeze by the crisis. And there's a reason for that. Next would be Takata's response. They're the ones that produce the airbags. They're getting the most flack right now. They've had seven press releases since the crisis broke out, stuff as message from the chairman, an open letter to the US market uh, asking for their forgiveness and apology for the crisis this has caused. They're taking the apologetic side. They're compensating and saying they're going to work with everybody. They're being apologetic about it, being sorry. They're apologizing to both the industry and the consumer as both parties have been affected. And as I said, they've accepted responsibility, they're committed to the resolution, and they are working with NHTSA to get this sorted out. From NHTSA's perspective now, NHTSA two press releases, generic press releases saying this is what's going on, the who, what, where, when, why, and how, what's in their press releases, very generic stuff. We get down to consent orders, which is basically telling Takata, sign off on these documents. This is everything we're going to be doing in the organization, and these were made public. So this is very transparent. They're letting us see what they're doing. From there, they have preservation orders saying, hold on to all the airbags. We have to test them and find out, was this actually your crisis or not? 
from there, they then found out it was Takata's issue and their crisis. They have now fined them $200 million in terms of damages and all that that will be paid to the U.S. federal government. From there, they created a website because there's the other aspect. There's the industry that they have to put a standpoint down on, but they also have to get in contact with the consumer. Full-fledged website has the who, what, where, when, why, and how, and how to take care of your car. It's got recall list YouTube videos showing what happens when the, thing, uh, when the airbags fail. Very transparent, they're very open about it. So and this is, this recall is still in progress. So it's keeping people up to date about it. So looking at BMW, their response tactic was, they saw this as a low responsibility. They're a victim in this crisis. They didn't cause the crisis, they bought the airbags from Takata Corporation, and that's how they ended up in this crisis. They did nothing wrong. They were just supplying a product for their vehicle. So they're going with victimage, scapegoating, which is jumping off and saying, hey, this is Takata's fault. We had nothing to do with this. We just bought the airbags. And lastly, compensation. They said they're going to pay for the damages because it was our car, and the idea of following their brand of the ultimate driving machine, they want to repair it. From there, it's handled well. BMW did a good job of addressing the issue, and they avoided any unwanted attention. They didn't get blackballed into the crisis that Takata and NHTSA are currently involved with right now. And they established communication with their affected owners. That's all that they really needed to do was get those affected owners in and taken care of. As for Takata, they have technical air product harm. That's what they're claiming. Where basically, they've taken responsibility, they're sorry, they said this is unforeseen circumstances, we didn't think this was going to happen, and they're going with the idea of compensating apology and reminding them of all the successful products that Takata has made that are in vehicles today. From there, it's handled well, it's brand management at this point. They're trying to save their brand and save their reputation, and that's why they're taking the apologetic side of it. They're working with everybody and being transparent, so overall they're handling themselves quite well. Lastly, NHTSA. Their response, they said, this is something that should have been preventable. They're being very harsh on Takata right now, saying this, you guys should have prevented this. You should have known better. They're, being, they're saying the government and the people are a victim of this crisis. They're scapegoating off of Takata, and they're reminding people that airbags are an important product. Uh, from there, their response could have been better. It takes 13 years for them to acknowledge this is a crisis. I understand one Honda Civic rupture is in the grand scheme of things, not a major thing, but it should have been something they were looking into earlier, considering there were subsequent incidences in the following years. They are an authority figure and a guardian for the U.S. market right now. So they're standing out there and saying, the people can't speak up for themselves in this standpoint. We're doing it for them. And lastly, they're being transparent and becoming the go-to source so people know everything about this crisis that they need to know and where to go to get their vehicle taken care of. Because it's a serious crisis. Driving down the road, you're afraid to get into an accident, not because of the accident, but because of the fact that the shrapnel that comes out of the airbag can kill you. So this is a very serious crisis. But I want a positive theory here. This is a full circle cause and effect crisis, and this is the main point here. Going back to 1991, there was an act passed by NHTSA and the U.S. government that basically said any car by 1998 had to have an airbag in it. So. What this did is the effect of the Takata crisis, in my theory. We look over to the right side of the screen, this is how I see it playing out. The first step was the Intermodal Act was passed. This caused a demand spike in the amount of airbags that were needed, because beforehand they were only in luxury vehicles, because they were considered a luxury at the time. So now there's a demand spike. Not many players in the market can meet the supply. Takata was one of them that had to. So now there's rush production, there's less time for testing, which means they put a product out there before it was fully tested. And that's what ended up leading to the crisis as the product in turn failed before they could see that there was a failure with high absolute humidity. Because this was something where a car sits out in high absolute humidity for years down in the South Florida area in those regions where humidity is always 100%, which wears down the airbag. So this is something that would have required years of testing, but due to government intervention, this is what caused this crisis. And it's such a beautiful way to play it out because the government is taking no responsibility for it. They're saying, this is Takata. This is all Takata's fault. We had nothing to do with this. And it's great management by NHTSA because they've done a perfect job of covering up anything that they had to do with this crisis. And everybody's just seeing them as the figure that's stepping in to help instead of someone that actually caused it. So that's my theory on this. But to wrap this up, in general, major crisis right now being handled well, but it's slow due to the fact of trying to track vehicles. That's the slowdown here. On terms of responses, everybody handled themselves well. 
there's a variety here. You see victims, and you see other people involved here, and you see brand management. And it's still developing, so. But that's not the only crisis today. We're gonna see Volkswagen in a little bit from Annie. Any questions? Okay.